Hey guys, hope we're all doing well. Welcome to uh, kind of official week two of Musical Instruments of the Orchestra. So I've got the same chart I put up there last week uh, when we talked about strings, where they go, how they work, how they use vibration to make sound, um, and why they take up so much space at the bottom. We've got that conductor who stands at the front and kind of acts as the director for everybody, tells all of the musicians Remember, in an orchestra, you can have anywhere from 50 to 100. Um, they tell all the musicians when it's time to begin, when it's time to stop, if they should be getting louder, softer, maybe certain sections of instruments shouldn't be playing at a certain part in time. That's all kind of on the conductor, okay? The uh, musicians need to know their music, but the conductor kind of gives them the official signal um, about what they're supposed to be doing, okay? So we've also got the woodwind here. Quick refresher on woodwind, those are instruments that we blow into. They can be made of wood, but we'll find out when we do that next week. That's not always the case. Um, and then we've got brass, which is always going to be made of metal, and you blow into those too. Thing is, we're going to find that we blow into woodwind instruments and brass instruments in a very, very different way. Up at the top, and kind of taking up most of the back, is the percussion section. And this is the biggest family in terms of the number of instruments that we see. It doesn't have more players than the string family, but it has more instruments. And the way that works is that if you are a percussionist, you don't end up tied down to just one instrument. Uh, if you were playing the trumpet in the orchestra, you would only play the trumpet. Nobody would take that away from you and say, here's a tuba, now you got to go learn how to do that. Um, if uh, when you get to fifth grade band, you don't join on just one instrument. You join on a snare drum, which we'll look at a little bit later, but also a bell set, or a, we kind of know it as a xylophone, uh, because it's important that percussionists are able to play a ton of different instruments. And again, that's because the family is just so big. Uh, if we had somebody on stage to play every single percussion instrument, there it would be extremely overcrowded. We'd have like 200 people on stage, all squished shoulder to shoulder, and we'd have people who were there pretty much to, you know, just play something like a triangle, okay? Imagine standing on stage for an hour to go like that one time, okay? So most of those percussionists, we call those auxiliary percussionists, and they move, oops, they move from instrument to instrument, uh, kind of taking on some of the smaller jobs. Now, the reason the percussion family is so big is because these instruments, unlike strings, they're going to work in different ways. They're going to be made of different things. They're going to look differently. This is not a family that we can look at and say, oh, they all have bodies, necks, heads, strings, bridges, all that stuff. Um, a lot of them are going to work differently. And what does tie them all together for the most part is a lot of them we have to hit, but even the ones that we're not hitting, um, we're causing to vibrate in some um, physical way. It might not be hitting, but one good example is this, a maraca. If we are playing the maraca, we're not going to smack it. That's not even gonna make much of a noise. Instead, we shake it. We find another physical way of getting this thing to vibrate getting it to make noise. So let's go over some of the ways that we play percussion instruments and just a kind of small sample uh, of some of the instruments you've probably seen in class before and maybe even played yourself. So when we think of percussion instruments, a lot of times we think of drums, like this monster right here. The thing is, we also usually think of drumsticks. And for the most part, we don't really play that many types of drums with drumsticks. So we're gonna put that away for later. Okay, this specific drum, uh, this is going to be played with just an open hand. And where the sound comes from, this part of the drum right here, this is called the head of the drum. This, the side, this is actually the body and it works kind of like a guitar body. The sound bounces around in there and comes back at us loud enough for to hear. When we hit the head of the drum, it vibrates and it sends it all throughout the body and it echoes and it bounces back and forth and eventually it bounces back at us, okay? We can get different sounds by playing with different parts of our hands, by leaving our hand on there, by using the fingers, by using one finger, and even by playing in different parts of the drum, okay? Now, 
Another tool you can use to play drums, and a lot of other instruments actually too, is this right here. This is called a mallet, and it, it kind of looks like a drumstick, but it has a large rounded head on it. And you might play a drum like this. This is called a tom drum. It has a handle, and it has that same body. Here's where the vibration comes from, bounces around and gets loud, and here's our head. Now this is a drum you can hit with your hand, and depending on how you play it, you get a different sound quality. Another drum that kind of looks the same as the last one, this is called a snare drum, or at least it's a version of a snare drum. And what makes it a snare drum are these little metal pieces inside, almost kind of like springs. And they kind of add another element of vibration. The drum head vibrates when we tap it, but also the metal springs tap on the other side. And if we add that mallet to it, we kind of get that type of drum that we would expect to hear in a marching band. And snare drum is that drum. We would absolutely hear snare drum in a marching band. Whereas that drum that I just showed you, the large brown one, uh, that's more like a bass drum, kind of the big one you'd see somebody carrying right on the front of them. As far as smaller percussion instruments, you can really see why we wouldn't assign just one person to play all of these. You're not going to have a ton of use for this clapper-like instrument. It's cool, it's fun, it's, it makes a nice sound, but you're not going to hear it through every minute of a song. It would probably give you a headache. We've also got instruments that can be used multiple ways. These are called rhythm sticks or loomy sticks sometimes. Uh, you can tap them together. But if you look closely, they have ridges, so we can also scrape them and get a bunch of different timbres, sound qualities, okay? We have kind of a larger version of that that's not ridged. These are called claves, and uh, if we use these in class, we usually kind of hold them at the bottom and, and tap them at the top. These are usually pretty heavy, but the way you would actually want to play these, and sometimes we avoid this uh, just because we don't want to accidentally snag a finger or something, is we kind of rest it on our hand. You can see it's sitting loosely, so it has lots of room to vibrate. And when we play it like that, I'm not squeezing it. So it can vibrate a little more, the sound can resonate, and it can be a little bit louder, okay? We also have this, this is called a tone block, and you can see we're using a mallet on this too. Um, this is a little bit like those rhythm sticks. For the most part, we have a hollow part right here and a crack up the side, it's supposed to be there, uh, to allow the instrument to vibrate and kind of send that sound back at us. But we can also, there's a couple ridges here, change the type of sound we make, okay? and. These instruments are never going to be the star of the show, uh, like you would see from instruments like in the woodwind or the brass or even the string section. They kind of just provide um, window dressing. They provide some interesting rhythms and some different types of timbres is a word I've thrown out now. Um, my older kids are going to know that, I hope, from class. My younger kids, you might have heard me throw that out but it's not something we've talked about in great detail. Timbre is sound quality. It's kind of the idea that if I clap my hands and if I stomp my feet, I'm gonna get two completely different sounds because of how thick or what uh, the items I'm hitting together are made out of. Um, obviously my hands are not quite as large as a floor that I'm putting my foot on and percussion instruments kind of use that as well. Another one we can look at is this one, which combines elements of uh, jingle bells almost. And um, these ones use very, very small cymbals. And cymbals is something we'll talk about uh, again in the second part of this video. But they're little just discs of metal that rattle together, cause each other to vibrate, and create a very different sound than you'd hear from the head of the drum. Uh, the reason tambourine's kind of an interesting instrument is because you've got that drum head, so if we kind of mute those cymbals, we've got a straight up drum. But if we kind of use everything together, we've got the cymbals rattling, and we can use that in a lot of different ways to achieve a lot of different sounds. Okay? 
And then of course I already showed you this one. This one's the triangle. And it's we, when we play this one, we have to be careful to not hold on to it. Kind of sounds like you're hammering a nail in if you just grab onto it. And the reason for that is I'm not letting it vibrate. I'm stopping it from shaking back and forth. And remember, that's where our sound comes from. So what really kind of works with this one is we are holding on. You can see it's kind of suspended by a string here. And I give it a tap and it's allowed to kind of vibrate very freely. Now, it's shaking back and forth in such a small way and so fast that even when I put it right up close to you, you're not really going to see much happening. You can see it shake at first when I hit it, but it's vibrating in just the smallest way, and that's what creates the sound. And if you listen carefully, you can even still hear it going right now. Okay? Um, so that's all I have to show you for auxiliary percussion. Uh, I am going to post a second short video uh, just because I have something else I want to show you, but it's not in the same room I'm in right now, and I don't want to carry you with me and make you dizzy. So I'll see you again in a couple minutes.